Welcome to Web Systems. Lesson 3, The Web and Security, Part 1, Introduction. We tend to think about security from personal experiences. For example, malware, like viruses, trojans, worms, fraud. Or we worry about our access to systems, like our user IDs, passwords, and access to resources like UTS Online, or our email, or even our bank details. What about what happens if our laptops or devices are stolen? We might accidentally leave our USB keys in the lab. Or what about some malicious acts, like vandalism of your website, someone pretending to be you on social media, or stealing your identity, or your assignments, and submitting it, or even stealing my exams? All these sort of threats cover a wide range of security issues. We have multiple subjects and majors at UTS which cover this area, such as the Digital Forensics major in the Bachelor of Forensic Science, the Internetworking and Cybersecurity major or sub-major in the Bachelor of Science and IT, and the Cybersecurity and Privacy major in the Bachelor of Computer Science. You can categorize the security issues into three main areas. We call it CIA. C for confidentiality, I for integrity, and A for availability. I'll talk about those in the next slide. Let's look at the first concept, confidentiality. This is where you need to keep information accessible only to authorized users. And that is, we need to check can it be seen by whom, when, where, and how? For example, can't be seen. Let's make sure we encrypt the information so we cannot see it unless we have the decryption ability. Let's check the authentication. Make sure people log in, find out who they are, what can they access. Let's check out when they can access it. Can it be online, at UTS, offline, from home? About where? What sort of access controls do we have? Do we say that only staff can access your public website? And what about other information like how's it transmitted? HTTP, HTTPS, is it transmitted by email? All those sort of things we need to think about quite clearly. Let's look at the second concept, integrity. Now the key thing is we may be authorized, we may have access to the information, we're in the correct location, we've used the right protocols. What if somebody alters stuff? So you enter in a credit card for buying something from eBay and suddenly you have 10 orders instead of one. Obviously the vendor will be very happy, you won't be. So let's check the information. So we need to make sure the information is correct, it's processed correctly, and finally it hasn't been changed without you knowing it's been changed, whether in storage, that is on the disk, or in transit, for example over the web. We also need to be able to detect it. And typical ways we can do that is through things like, for example, order trails, a log, typically what's called. We have a special mathematical means, which we'll talk about later, called hashes, checksums, and digests. The third triad, sorry, wrong word to use there, triad. Um, the third concept we need to be aware of is availability. Now, it's great having a system that's secure and safe, but if nobody can access it, what's the point? So it might be more than just simple security aspects. It could be systems like, is it available? If our website dies, UTS Online dies, for example, you cannot do your class. So we need to have multiple systems. We call hot and cold standby systems. Um, can the systems resist attacks? Now, UTS Online is accessible from the general web. What if we get hit by a concerted attack from the US or from China, from India or somewhere like that? Will the system survive or not? And finally, for example, internal systems, payroll systems, for example, we can only access that from within UTS. So nobody from outside UTS can actually access our system called NEO, which is our staff management system. So to protect ourselves, we need to be aware of how to break up all these different types of security systems into general concepts. And these general concepts are things like security services, security mechanisms, to vent against a particular type of security attack. 
So a typical security ser service could be something that makes use of a security mechanism. And then the security mechanism I'll talk about in a few minutes. And we need to identify what sort of attacks there are that these security services protect us against. In order to work out the security mechanism to counter a security attack, it's probably a good idea to know what sort of security attacks are out there. In a normal situation, we're only interested in one thing, getting information point A to point B, like that. And for example, an information source could be the web, www, and our destination could be a browser. Okay, that's a normal situation. What happens if it changes? Let's take a look again. I send information from the web and pow, can't get through. I am not happy. That's an interruption, not good news. The question to ask is, what type of security attack is it? That's called an availability attack. Simple as that. So let's take a look at another type of attack. Interception. So here I am entering my credit card. And I send it to my website. And somebody makes a copy. And I suddenly find my credit card is out of money a big negative sign in front of that. Again, unhappy Chris. What sort of attack is that one? You might want to ask, what sort of attack is that one? It's a confidentiality attack. Somebody has sniffed my web connection and grabbed my credit card. Not good news. So what about another type of interception? I decide to buy, I decide to pay $1,000 into Chris Wong's account. So let's take a look at an example. I send $1,000. I send it to Mr. Evil. Who changes it to $10,000. I'm not saying I'm evil. It's another type of attack. You're suddenly $9,000 out of money. Not a good attack to have. That's a classic example of an integrity attack. Not good news either. Pretty awful news for you and me. What about the next attack? Fabrication. Well, that's an easy one. I'm not even involved. And this is Mr. Evil. I'll draw Mr. Evil again. He decides to make a fake credit card for $10,000 into this account. But I'm not involved at all. What happens? That's a fabrication attack. That's not good news. So somebody's faked my credit card. So the question is, what sort of attack is that? And that's a classic example of what we call an authenticity attack. In other words, somebody's stolen my identity and maybe just my credit card and made use of my money. Not a good example. I hate it. Typically what happens when people look over your shoulder and see you typing in your credit card number and your card expiry date and the uh, credit card code, that four three digit thing on the back of the card. Or they just read your PIN number from an ATM. Another good example. So let's take a look at the type of typical security services you might need. Obviously I mentioned CIA. Full on example. Stuff we talked about earlier. But there's other things that work with the type of security services out there. Good example, non-repudiation. We want to make sure that you promise you're going to do something and you'll actually will guarantee it happens. Good example, when you pay by PayPal. When you click yes to pay, that's it. They keep a track that you're not you can't reverse the order. Access controls. If you're a student or staff, you have different levels of access. Simple as that. And availability. Once I've committed to paying my something for with a credit card, it can't be changed. So I've got to make sure that somehow in somebody's system, the credit card value is not changed. 
Again, a difficult thing to do, and we'll look at the type of services that solve these problems in the next few slides.